One of the most crucial lessons I believe for any student of life, any student of truth, anyone who is on the pursuit of knowledge, abundance, and freedom. The most crucial lesson for you to learn is how fake, phony, and delusional you can be. Not how cricket, how phony, how perverted, how fake, how conditional this world is. I need for you, before you take another step down the road of truth, to understand that all of your judgments of other people, all of your judgments of this world, are all a reflection of you. What you say and believe to see and identify in this world externally is an accurate presentation, not of what you see on the outside 100% of the time, but 100% of the time, the way you describe another person or another thing or another occasion or another location it's true of you. Your judgments return to the sender. Your judgments are not very factual. They're not based in reality. Your judgments arise from this well of emotion that you sit on, that you allow to tighten to the point that you feel like you're about to burst. And then you say emotional things from your emotional understanding that is no understanding at all. And, <laughs> and that's the break in our ability to progress in being a student and in studying and identifying and applying truth and truth alone. We have multiple meanings for things that only mean one thing. We can take criticism Seven out of ten times, we can silently respond to the corrective moment. We can feel hurt, attacked, get defensive on the inside, but as long as we muster the presentation of silence, then we can rely on the technicality later, if ever approached or confronted, about our offset energy. And we can pretend that everything that we felt within was not there. And we can say, well, I ain't say nothing. You was messing with me earlier and I ain't do nothing. I was messing with you. I thought we were having a conversation. I thought we were communicating. I only kept talking because you shut down. And rather than me shut down with you and me reflect your dysfunction in this moment, and then show that I have the same interest in us finding the resolve that you have shown. I kept pushing. I kept trying to communicate in love and respect. I didn't go for your narratives. I didn't go. I didn't get wrapped up in your feelings. I didn't get wrapped up in the fact that you felt like I was attacking you and you got defensive. So you said something on the, on the attack and then I got defensive. And then we ended up in a situation where you really couldn't tell. Who was who who was the fool and who was the wise one? In those situations there is no fool and no wise one to be discovered. There's two fools. One under the impression that they are wise and the other probably just is satisfied being foolish. We don't really have an appetite for reality. We don't have an appetite for illusions. We have developed an appetite for what we've had, and what we've had has been a personalized mixture of reality and illusions combined into what I call the life that I want for me. When, when you talk about the issues that my illusions are bringing me to, I deny those and I only look at the positive attributes of my illusions and my dysfunction. And I use my attention on the positive interpretations of my dysfunction to justify my unwillingness to remove myself from the dysfunction and find something more suitable and productive. 
Anytime you want to stay dysfunctional, you're going to convince yourself that your dysfunction has reason and is justified. You're going to convince yourself that your dysfunction is something that you cannot control. You're going to convince yourself and try to convince others that your dysfunction is something that is just beyond you. It's something that you, you can't stop. It's something that you've tried to stop. You go into these presentations with people who are trying to show you in moments that you are not a victim. You are not broken. You are just as delusional and deceived as they used to be when they thought they knew as well. But you get you get it in your head that the person who sees that you don't know doesn't know. And you go back and forth and try to convince them that your trauma, your issues, your dysfunction is tailor made and something that no one else can understand. You've tried to explain it to people. Even your mama and your daddy didn't get it. You was the black sheep of your family. You always just loved too hard. You always was just too different. You always just was too good for other people to be comfortable around you. And to be honest, it's time that we start challenging these narratives that we have told ourselves and convinced ourselves was true. Even though daily we run into experiences that show us if we were open to seeing it and we were not blind to anything or everything that did not align with what we thought we were supposed to see. We would have been solid. You would have been solid if it was not love that directs you. And it's not love that keeps you upset with these people that you are trying to engage with when they come into your life and they won't let you take control over them. They won't let you put the battery in their back. They won't let you grab the controller and go up, down, left, right, X square, triangle. I, you, you know what I'm talking about. You want to help people so bad that you want to control them into doing it. You see, you know what is best for them, even though sometimes you don't know what's best for you, even though you be needing advice, even though you be looking for somebody to kind of lend you some 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 wisdom and give you some understanding and direction for your own life. You look over at this person that you pity and you get it in your head that you know what they need to be better. But you don't tell them that you know what they need to be better. You're not that direct and you're not that transparent because you know if you said that you become offensive because that's an offensive mindset for you to think that you're some type of superior to me in comparison and then get it in your head that you have a process that you should be able to apply upon me willingly or unwillingly with my knowledge or without my knowledge, with my consent or without my consent. And it's such a good idea. And the outcome is going to be such a good benefit for me that if I fight and I wrestle against what you are trying to do with me and to me without my knowledge and without my consent and communication, you're upset with me and you think that I'm being unreasonable and irrational and I'm stuck in my ways. And this is the paradox of living deceived inside of the split mind presentation where it's always you versus you. <laughs> 